Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, circular motion in relation to 2D kinematics. And uh, some of this is going to be review, and some of this might be new for, for some of you. So the, the uh, first thing I'll mention is uh, if anything is traveling in a circle, um, we should already know from our previous, previous physics course that there is an acceleration inward. So for instance, if I have something traveling in that circle, let's say here's a something, let's say it's a car going in a circle or you're twirling a rock in a circle or anything like that. There has to be an inward acceleration and we call that radial acceleration, so A sub R. And the magnitude of that radial acceleration is equal to V squared divided by R. And your textbook will go into a very detailed explanation of how to derive that. But basically what that's saying is the any vector has a magnitude and a direction. If either of those changes, then you have uh, um, acceleration. So velocity, let's say for this moment, let's say the velocity is upward, okay? Because in a few moments, the velocity's direction will change, then there has to be acceleration. If, if either the magnitude or the size of that velocity is changing, then there is acceleration. If only the direction is changing, then you only have radial acceleration. So like, for instance, imagine if you were in a parking lot and you were traveling at a constant uh, 10 meters per second, that means your speed is constant. But if you're turning in a circle while you're doing that, you do have an acceleration. It's inward toward the center of the circle. And you feel that, by the way. If you turn your car, let's say, left, you feel like you get thrown to the right. Now, you don't actually get thrown to the right, but it feels like that. That indicates an inward, leftward acceleration. Now, um, most of you all should have had all this last year. The one that's different um, that you may not have done last year is what if our actual magnitude of our velocity is changing, a.k.a. what if we're speeding up or slowing down? Well, then you have a tangential acceleration, and that is literally the rate at which your speed is changing. Are you speeding up or slowing down? Okay. There's no equation for that. It's just that's just the, that's kind of like what, what the acceleration that you would normally think of is. Um, so there's, there's two components of acceleration when you're going in a circle. You have a radial acceleration, but you may also be speeding up or slowing down, so you could also have a tangential acceleration. And as the name indicates, tangential means tangent to the circle. It's, it's going to be edge, edgewise to the circle, whereas radial acceleration, as the name indicates, is along the radius. Okay. Now, um, I've got two examples to do with you kind of regarding this. Okay. So uh, actually, I got three. <laughs> so the first one, I'll keep really simple. Imagine that you're twirling a rock in a circle. Now, let's say this circle is vertical, okay? So imagine you are, you're standing in your room and you've got a little, little rock and you're twirling it up and down in a circle, okay? A vertical circle. So gravity is gonna be important here. You're gonna actually have to worry about that. Uh, let's assume the rock is going counterclockwise and let's say the rock, at one moment it's there, and at another moment, it's directly at, at, on the top of the circle, okay? And I give you the following statistics. I tell you the radius of the circle is 10 centimeters. And I tell you the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is two meters per second, okay? Um, we're gonna determine, uh, I'll make it fancy. At those two locations, and I'll call them location A and location B, Okay, just for just for argument, um, what is the the rate of change of velocity? What's dvdt at both locations at a and at b? Okay, well, first of all, uh, dvdt is a fancy way of saying acceleration. So I'll start with that. Um, and we have to worry about gravity here. The only other force that would be acting on our rock would be uh, the string could be pulling on it and will be pulling on it. Okay, so at point a, okay. Um, we know since we're going in a circle, we have to have a radial acceleration. And the magnitude of that radial acceleration is equal to V squared over R. Uh, the velocity I gave you to be 2. I'm going to square that. The radius is 10 centimeters, which is 0.1 meters. And this would be uh, 4 over 0.1 or 40 meters per second per second. Now, 
which way does it have to point? Well, it always points inward. So here we have a radial acceleration that's equal to 40 meters per second per second. Ah, but gravity is also acting on this thing. So there's going to be a tangential acceleration, and that's going to be equal to 9.8 meters per second per second. That'll be downward. Now, if our rock is going counterclockwise, as I've indicated, then the rock would be slowing down. If you imagine that, if you're twirling a rock in a circle, when it's on its way up, it is going to be slowing down. Okay. Now, what about when the rock is at the top of our path? So at point B here. Okay. And let's assume that you're able to twirl it such that these conditions, the radius is still 10 centimeters. And at that top part now, let's say the velocity is two meters per second. Uh, same question. What's dBdt? What's the rate of change of velocity? Okay. Well, yes, this magnitude of the radial acceleration is not going to change. It's still going to be 40 meters per second per second, and it's going to be inward, which is straight down. So this will be 40, and I'll, I'll even write in here, meters per second per second. And that's going to be it. Gravity does not point left or right, so there's no tangential acceleration. Now, uh, and by the way, what you could write here, if you wanted to write it in unit vector notation, you would say the acceleration is zero i hat, and I would say minus 40 j hat meters per second per second. Now you might ask, well, what about gravity? Okay, well, that points down, and that is part of the 40. Okay, so one way you can think of it is gravity provides 9.8 of that. And the string would have to provide the other 30.2 of it. Um, in other words, there would have to be two downward forces acting on the rock at point B. And we'll talk more about force next unit. But the downward forces would be gravity and the tension in the string. Okay. Now, I, I do have two more examples, uh, fairly brief to do with you. I'll do them in the next video. So uh, look forward to seeing that. Have a good one.